Sotiropoulos here, the Greek gourmand, bringing you the finest in classical, traditional Greek food recipes available anywhere. Today's recipe is more than just a simple recipe. It is, in fact, a ritual. My family's Greek coffee ritual. We've been consuming coffee for generations. We make it in a specific way, and I am going to be sharing that with you today. Before I do so, I want to thank the fine people at foodbuzz.com for sending me this wonderful apron and the spatula which I used in my tzatziki video recipe. They give away the best swag. If you're a food blogger, you should be a member of foodbuzz.com. As well, I just want to remind everyone that I am also producing a Twitter feed. Uh, our, the address for the Twitter feed is twitter.com forward slash Greek food, all one word. So it's twitter.com forward slash Greek food. The Twitter feed is the most direct way for you to get into contact with me or for me to get into contact with you. Uh, it is just the most convenient thing and I encourage you to follow the feed if you are at all getting anything out of these video recipes or the corresponding blog, GreekGourmand.com. Um, I also want to thank everybody for their kind words of encouragement and I hope to continue to improve uh, in my presentation technique here. So if you have any tips for me, feel free to send them along either through Twitter or send me an email at greekgourmand at gmail.com. Once again, greekgourmand at gmail.com. And don't forget, we also have a great group on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, just look up the Greek Food Group. That's it. Greek Food on Facebook. Now, allow me to introduce you to my family's Greek coffee ritual. Bye. This is my Greek coffee cup. My mother had my name embossed on this cup when I was 10 years old. She had one done for my siblings, one each for my siblings as well. And it's just a wonderfully beautiful cup and I use it every time I have Greek coffee and I think of my mom. Now, of course, the ingredient list is relatively fundamental. We have Greek coffee. And there's our Greek coffee, one tablespoonful of Greek coffee, a nice heaping tablespoonful, and a couple teaspoonfuls of sugar. This is uh, enough coffee and sugar to create what is known as a metrion cafe, which is a medium coffee, and it basically means that it is a medium sweet and medium uh, ratio of coffee to water beverage. Now, you can have other ratios and other admixtures of sugar or non-sugar and we call for instance a very heavy coffee a vari coffee. Vari is the Greek word for weighty. Uh, it could also be a vari glico which is uh, weighty sweet um, and there's a whole slew of others as well as you can well imagine. Now um, I am going to be using a briki which is a traditional Greek coffee maker and that's this over here you can find these at supermarkets, generally speaking. Some of the larger supermarkets should stock these. Uh, some of the better stocked ethnic stores. If you have a Greek bakery in your area or a delicatessen, they will definitely have one of those. And that's, that's what we need in terms of our equipment here. So we're going to move on over to the stove and I'm going to show you how we roast coffee. Greeks do not brew coffee. We roast it. Now, on the question of how much water to use, I measure the water based on the size of my cup. And my cup holds about two-thirds of a metric cup, or about 175 milliliters of liquid. And for me, that's the ideal amount of water to coffee ratio to create what I consider to be the perfect metrion cafe. So I'll just dump the water into my briki. And we're going to bring this to a boil, but before the water boils, we want to add our coffee. So as I mentioned, one tablespoonful, one heaping tablespoonful of Greek coffee. We want to get it all in there. And two teaspoonfuls of sugar. And then we want to make sure we stir it. Stir it well so that we get all the coffee mixed into the water. And you'll want to do this quickly because things tend to get rather hot as you're hovering your hand over top of the flame. So once we've mixed that up, we're going to let that sit until it boils. Alright, so as you can see, the coffee is now starting to boil and 
we want to catch it just as it's starting to bubble up in, in towards the center and we're going to lift it away from the heat source because we want to create those little bubbles that you see forming right now on the surface. Uh, we may have to lift, lift it up even a little higher at times to ensure that we, we make a nice foamy surface in the coffee. That's known as kaimaki and it's, it's a must. You need your kaimaki in order to have a proper Greek coffee. And so now for the pour, which is likely the most important part of the entire process. You'll want to dump it quickly into your cup in order for the froth, the kaimaki, to maintain its integrity across the entire surface of the cup. Which is why we measure the exact quantity of the cup when we're making our coffee. Greeks want their coffee, uh, kaimaki and all, to actually come right up to the rim of the cup that we're drinking from. I should mention also that you obviously didn't notice any filtration in the process of making this coffee. That's because Greek coffee is an unfiltered coffee. The grounds actually filter down through the water and end up on the bottom of the cup. So we sip our coffee slowly as we wait for that process to take place. And the final product is just an incredible, deeply flavorful coffee. Mm -hmm.